We have to do something, something major. Prisons are packed in. People get killed almost every week. Uh, the drugs, the cell phones, all the contraband that comes into the jails and prisons, there's no way to stop it because we don't have any money to police it inside. That was criminal defense attorney Ken Sue Dorfel back in 2016. Dorfel was referencing the amount of contraband in Oklahoma jails and prisons. It's now 2024 and our correctional facilities are facing more problems now that the state has decided to begin phasing out Geo Group a private organization that operates prisons for profit. My name is Seth Marsicano and you're watching KSWO Investigates Behind Bars in Oklahoma. These facilities are meant for rehabilitation and they're funded by taxpayer dollars. But when you have people dying when things such as drugs or phones are being brought inside, they're not only failing that person's family, but the everyday taxpayer. One of the arguments Dorfel made back then was prisons were overcrowded with people charged with possession of illegal drugs, which was a felony. While it's now considered a misdemeanor, it's a case by case scenario where there are instances for it to be raised to a felony charge. Stevens County District Attorney Jason Hicks said then other steps were considered to lower Oklahoma's prison population. There can be a higher release rate through the parole board and uh, putting some money into parole and putting some money into having enough detention officers to make sure that they have somebody to report to, I think would be a step in the right direction. Fast forward to 2018 when the Oklahoma Department of Corrections reported seizing more than 7,000 cell phones from inmates in state prisons. Theoretically, most people probably think prisons should be the most secure facility around. And I can say that that's not the case at all. Kyle Kabelka is the district attorney for Comanche County, and according to him, phones are one of the most dangerous pieces of contraband. Not only does it give them ability to obviously reach out outside of the prison walls to talk to people um, on the streets, you know, to either get drugs moved, get people hurt or killed, um, but and, you know, to still operate whatever type of business dealings or operation they're doing. And for the five years between 2018 and 2023, officials with the Department of Corrections say they confiscated over 20,000 cell phones. This was such an issue that the Cell Phone Jamming Reform Act of 2023 was introduced multiple times by the Oklahoma Senate which would allow a state or federal correctional facility to operate a jamming system to interfere with cell phone signals within inmate housing facilities. This corresponds with a tweet from Senator James Langford sent at the beginning of the year stating, quote, the more we can do to prevent the rampant use of contraband cell phones in jails, which act as a gateway for criminal activity both inside and outside of prisons, the more families, victims, and communities will feel safe and secure States need jamming authority now. However, the act never received a vote, dying out. This creates dangerous situations for corrections officers in these facilities. In one instance, a correctional officer for then Davis Correctional Facility, a privately owned prison in Oklahoma, was killed after an inmate attacked him. You had some of the worst individuals capable of violence just out like a normal medium security inmate. Um, had access to the guards, crazy idea to make weapons all the time and the amount of drugs that flow in these yards is unacceptable. In the next year, Davis Correctional Facility was taken over by the Department of Corrections where it became the Allen Gamble Correctional Center. The facility was dedicated to a sergeant who was killed inside the Oklahoma State Reformatory in Granite by an inmate. Gamble was responding to a distress call by another guard who was stabbed 13 times. The Oklahoma State Reformatory, where all death row inmates are held, has also had a trend of contraband smuggling. In one week, there were five cases of people attempting to bring in contraband. And according to law enforcement and court documents, they see cases like this every week. And it's all orchestrated from the inside. It's a big problem for us in this, from this standpoint. Presently, the Greer County Jail holds 36 prisoners. Today, there are 41% of those are people that are charged with making prison drops or bringing contraband into the prison. Thomas stated the sad reality is gang members who find their way inside prison don't usually change for the better when contraband is a prevalent influence. We're probably catching just a, a small amount of what is actually going in. Being caught with contraband could land people in prison for up to five years or keep inmates behind bars for up to another 20. However, some inmates have nothing to lose. Especially when it's a life without parole type of case, 
there's very little punishment that my office can enact, a court can enact on a guy who's never going to get out of prison anyways. And so sometimes, not always, but sometimes on cases like that, we choose not to file just because it's, it's kind of um, a waste of resources and time. I never realized how massive of an issue contraband was until I actually started digging into the story. Not in any one particular facility, but across the entire state. But when asked about solutions every official 7 News has spoken with over the many years of prison-related stories all say the same thing. There isn't one. They're coming up with new and different ways to get in the contraband, so we have to come in and come up with new and different ways to stop it. So it's a continuous process, it's a learning process, um, working together with other law enforcement agencies, doing more training, just making everyone more aware. While officials say there's not a perfect solution that hasn't stopped Oklahoma legislature from trying to pass legislation to at least help dampen contraband smuggling. Whether these measures will go into effect is based off a myriad of factors. If they do, your 7 News team will be watching to see how exactly they affect the contraband issue in Oklahoma prisons. Until then, contraband poses a severe threat to the safety of inmates and staff alike, according to multiple studies. Stay tuned to KSWO Investigates Behind Bars in Oklahoma as we look at increases in inmate violence and employee conditions. Reporting for 7 News, I'm Seth Marsicano.